Ding, ding, ding. Engineering change order coming through. Remember I said the series of videos is dynamic. We're changing things up because this semester we're using the JLC library parts because they're going to do the assembly for us. So I want to identify a few changes from the last video, video 1.7, and going forward. I mentioned earlier that we're using different integrated libraries in the spring 2021 semester than uh, mentioned in the video. Uh, you should have installed the uh, two new integrated libraries. These are the 2020-12. There are two of them. There's the JLC and the manual. I'm going to walk you through these two libraries so you can see what's in them. The JLC are going to be the surface mount components. That JLC is going to assemble for us wherever possible. If you can find a part to use, you're going to grab it from the JLC library so that they do the work for us. But they can't assemble through whole parts. And so we will have certain parts that we're going to want in our board that we're going to grab from the other library, the manual library. There's going to be connectors and especially test points. And I'll walk you through a few of those. So keep in mind, as we go forward and look at the other videos, even though I'll say, hey, use this library, I use the 202007 library, ignore that. You're going to want to grab the parts from these. You're going to use very similar parts. You're going to use exactly the same method of placing them on the board, doing the connections between them. All of that's going to be exactly the same. It's just the source and maybe the specific part might be different. I'm going to walk you through these libraries. And in particular, you're going to want to pay attention and make sure that when you're using parts from the JLC library, you have identified the LCSC part number. I'm going to show you where in the library in the properties for each part, we can find that number. And we'll also pay attention to basic or extended. And remember I said, wherever possible, choose a basic part rather than an extended part. It'll be lower cost, and it won't eat into our max of 10 extended parts we're allowed to use on the board. There are going to be some parts that we just cannot find as basic, have to be extended. And that's why, if we possibly can use that a part as a basic part, we want to use that and not spend our limited number of expended options. Be sure to only use parts from these two libraries in your board. Even though in some of the other videos, I'm going to say, hey, grab this part. Um, don't do that. Only use the parts that are in these two libraries. Now, in some, when I created the first round of videos, we were doing the assembly by hand, and so we could be a little bit lax in what we were doing because we're going to do manual assembly, and I had parts in stock. And so in some cases where we didn't have in the 07 library a specific part value we wanted to use, I said, oh, just grab any old, li uh, any old resistor in the library, place that down, and just change its value because we have that part in stock, and I'm going to manually select it when um, it comes around to, to assembling the board. Because we're using JLC to do the assembly, don't do what I said only use the very specific part that is in the JLC library. When we manually assemble the board, it's OK to be a little bit lax. But when we order the boards and assemble them from JLC, we have to be very, very explicit. We have to use the exact specific part that's uniquely defined by the LCSC part number. That's what they're going to grab from their stock room, and that's what they're going to put on the board. And each part number has a specific value. If we don't have that part specifically in the JLC library, it's not available from the library. You either have to build that, find that component, build that symbol yourself, or use something that's approximate, or at the last case, uh, consider manually placing that part. But because we have so many other parts we have to manually place, Keep that to a minimum in your designs. So when you're using an LCSC part, don't change its value, because that will completely screw up the assembly process and generate confusion, which is a source of risk. One other thing, throughout most of this video, I call the schematic page a page. It's just kind of referring to the page. I should really use the correct term as sheet. 
So whenever you hear me say schematic page, think schematic sheet. Let's take a quick look at these two libraries and how we use them. To illustrate the use of the two libraries, the JLC library and the manual library, I wanted to open up a schematic sheet in order to show you those parts. And so I just created a dummy project. Uh, just the default names, I've added a sheet to it, and you'll notice that every time you add a new sheet, so add new to project, schematic sheet, look, in this version of Altium, this is 21x, in this version, it automatically adds a number in front, which is really, really convenient when we're, we're using multiple sheets. We'll look at multiple sheets in uh, the project for board two. But for now, we're just going to use everything on one sheet. So here is that schematic sheet. And I just want to use this to place some parts so you can see what are in the two libraries. Now remember I said um, to, to find the libraries, go to the components page. And you've already installed the two libraries. Even though you know we talk about the 202007 library in a lot of the videos, that's what we use when we created the videos, you're going to be using these two libraries. Notice this one has JLC. This one says manual. The JLC is the first choice. This has the parts that we've identified that JLC already has available and that we can use as surface mount parts on our board. I'm going to walk you through some of these. Browse through them at your leisure. You'll notice we have a number of capacitors. We have a number of LEDs. We have a number of resistors. And look, down here, we have the 555. And look, we have two different options for the 555. All of these parts are available. When we click on any of them, so let's come over here, looking at the resistors, here's a 4.7 ohm resistor. So I click on that part, and down here we identify the information, and notice here, here is the LCSC part number. Every one of these parts has an LCSC part number. That uniquely defines it in the JLC stockroom. And so when we're gonna use this part, so we double click, Change the icon, we place it on the schematic, there it is. It's now part of our design. Embedded in this sheet, when I placed this component, was all the information in the database about that part, including the link to the information about the footprint. The footprint is not in the schematic, but the link between the symbol and the footprint is in the schematic. When we push this schematic to the layout, Altium is going to go through each part, it's going to follow that link, and it's going to grab the footprint in the database based on that specific part. Let's uh, look at the properties of this part. So I'm going to highlight that part, I come over here to properties, and now here is all the information about that part. And we can scroll down and view it, here's the value for it, here's what it says about it. It's an 0603 uh, surface mount part, here's the information. Uh, let's look at more information. And look, here is the LCSC part number. That is really valuable information because that tells JLC which specific part to grab from the stockroom. And notice the type, basic. That's great. That says we're not going to get charged extra for using this part. We can use as many of these as we need to. Always choose basic if at all possible. Let's take a look at the other components. One thing to watch out for, which is really confusing, look, don't confuse an O in ohms with a zero. This is a 47 ohm resistor, not a 470 ohm resistor. Common mistake, remember, a lot of what we do is about risk reduction. Be aware of this potential confusion. And when we designate a value of a resistor below one ohm, generally use milli ohm. So this is 500 milli ohm or half an ohm. You'll notice that we have similar values with two different sizes. Which size do you want to use? Here's 47 ohm, 0402, 1206. Both of these are available in the JLC library. That's great. If we click this one and we look at um, its uh, part information, the 0402, here's the LCSC part number. And look, it's basic. If we click the 1206, here's the part number. It's extended. What does that mean? They're the same value. This one is basic. This one is extended. Which one do you want to use? 
you should have a strong, compelling reason not to use the basic one. So you always want to choose the basic one if you can. And so we double click, change the, move it out to the schematic page, uh, escape to clear, and now we've got that part. Hard to see, looking at that part, oh, that's the basic one, unless you highlight it and, and then go to uh, properties or components, here's properties, and now it says, oh, that's the basic part. Okay, that's a good one to use. If at all possible, use the basic part. If you absolutely need the large part, for example, why would you need the large part? If you plan on taking that resistor off and replacing it with another one, boy, it's really hard to do it when it's an 0402 part, but it's certainly possible to do it if it's a 1206 part. That's a strong, compelling reason to use the extended part. But if you choose to use an extended part, make sure you know that strong, compelling reason. When we look at the LEDs, for example, a blue LED, basic, a green LED, basic, a white LED, a red LED. Look at all these colors here. They're all basic. You can use any of the colors you want. Maybe you want to experiment. Maybe you want to use a particular color scheme in what you're doing, like green for all the power supplies, red for a problem or an alert, um, or white as just a general indicator. You decide what colors you want to use. All of the surface mount parts are available in here. And so when you select a part, first make sure that it has an LCSC part number. Second, make sure it's basic. If it's not basic, see if you can find another part that you can use that is. There are going to be a lot of parts that you're going to want that just aren't in the JLC library. That's why we have the manual library. In the manual library, we have all of the through-hole components. You'll notice, hey, there's some other components here as well. These are parts that they're all large enough so we can manually assemble, so they're all 12 of 6. Some of them are in the JLC library. Here's the, here's the, J, the LCSC part number. It's a basic part. Uh, and we have them here because these are potential parts to use manually. Don't select the parts from this library unless you haven't been able to find them in the the JLC library. But there are a lot of parts in here that aren't in the JLC library because they're through-hole parts. All of the pins are through-hole parts. And so if you need a connector, here we have some standard connectors. Here are, here's a four-pin header. Here's the footprint for, or here, here's the symbol for it. There are four pins. And here is the footprint for it. In particular, you're going to be using test points. So we scroll down here. Let's look at the test points. Ah, here we go. There are a variety of different test points. The most common one you're going to use is the test point for the 10X probe that is single-ended. We click on this. Here's what it looks like. There are four pins, and I'll show you why in a second. This is the footprint. There's one that's the signal pin, and there are three that are ground. The footprint is just a signal pin and a ground. We're assuming that these three pins that are associated with it are all connected to ground. The reason we have this footprint is because we have two different types of 10x probes. There are the normal 10x probes that will use this signal pin and the uh, ground lead, the little spring tip ground lead, connects into this pin over here. And so we would use this pin and this pin when we insert into the holes in the board the 10x probe. But I have another 10x probe that's a higher bandwidth 10x probe that is going to use this pin. And so if we use this footprint and this symbol, I can use whichever of those 10x probes that I want to use. There's one other version of a 10x probe that is special. It's the floating one. And when I click on this, you'll notice there's no connection to ground. You can use this for general purpose when you have a single ended signal. It just means you have to manually connect ground here. The purpose of this 10x probe is when we're looking at differential signals. And in board two, we're going to do that. So just be aware of it. All of the test points we're going to use, unless otherwise specified, are single-ended for 10x probe. And this is the symbol that you're going to use and connect up. So when you go through the videos, and I talk about using the 06 library, ignore those specific details, 
go find them in the JLC library or find them in the manual library if they're through hole.